Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wall of Power TV six season kickoff debut show. I'm your host, Paul Metza. I couldn't have found two greater guests uh, to have to feature tonight on the show. They're both radio legends in the Twin Cities. You know their names. I doubt, uh, to a large degree, if you've ever seen their faces. We are taping this show at Grumpy's Northeast at 22nd and 4th in my neighborhood, greatest bar in America, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about. I'm really honored to have both these guys here. Like I said, they're radio legends, and I would like to toast to my guests, Mr. Tom Mischke and Mr. Brian Oak. Welcome to Wall Power TV. Thank you, Paul. Very honored to be invited. Nice to be here. You know, the motto for my, when I started five years ago, my radio show, Wall of Power Radio Hour, on AM 950, and then a couple years ago, we turned into Wall of Power TV. Kind of our catchphrase was cool people from all walks of life in all 50 states. And we know the coolest people are in Minnesota, and I've got two of the coolest people here. They have a podcast that just started about, oh, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks ago. They're going to talk about that. We're going to learn about radio, and uh, you will get to see these good looking radio guys in person. So tell us first of all, how's the uh, podcast going? I'm thrilled because prior to the podcast, which is called For the Sake of the Songs, I had not met Brian. Really? It was a wild card request on my part looking to get three guys together to talk music. One guy I had worked with before, John Height at KSTP, we used to do a music hour on my old show every Friday but I wanted the synergy of three. And I was trying to think of who the third would be. And I thought of Brian and I said, I'll just throw it out there. And he right away said, I'm interested. And then when we got together, it was, that's my man. That's the guy, we got it, we got the show. Right. I gotta tell you that when Mishki reached out to me, um, I would, way back in the day when I worked at Cities 97, was doing afternoons, you come home at night, sometimes maybe a little happy hour, and then I would listen to him on the air. Hold on, let me get this straight. Brian Oak at happy hour. Okay, I got it. Keep going. <laughs> um, I, um, I, would, I would listen to Mishki, and here's what I like about people who do radio. Like, there are a lot of people who are radio guys. And while he's very capable at radio, in fact, really good at radio, he doesn't have a peer. He doesn't have an equal. I'm not saying he's the single greatest that's ever done it. What I mean is... Tommy Mischke does not have anyone who's analogous to what he does. Right. He is... He's an old man. He's a unicorn. He, he's a unique individual. And so there'd be shows where I'm like, eh, that's pretty interesting, or this was funny, or I like that caller. But no one else... I don't think I can pay a higher compliment to someone than say that they don't sound like anyone else. Right. Especially in this... And be successful in this industry. And I would find myself those driveway moments, as we call them, where I'm like, I'm home, I'm tired. I listened for 20 minutes sitting right. in the driveway, and my wife's like, what the it. hell are you doing? So, you know, and again, we had met, and all of a sudden he reached out, and I'm like, this is weird. It's great, but it's weird. Like, why? And I even asked you on our first phone call, I'm like, so this sounds amazing. Why are you calling me? And you, the fact that someone who's so good and so unique and so brilliantly weird at what he does called me I'm like okay and that's why I said like as you when you reached out I said yes immediately so I'm like I don't you know what who cares if nobody listens I want to sit down for a couple hours in Tommy Mischke's dining room Mischke's a great hang I, I, we hung to so say the hang. least and as I'm learning but it's um it's also like the reason this is an interesting thing to do you know you and I are probably never going to be independently wealthy right but you get to be creative, you yeah. get to check things out, and every once in a while when you get out of your comfort zone, that's when it gets fun. Yeah. That, that's when, and again, we're talking music, so we're not that far out of right. our comfort zone. But still, I was like, I was scared the first time I went over there. I was right. like, you know, and your friend John, amazing, and, uh, and you know, I'll get to know him better, but I was like, I'm gonna do a thing with Tommy Michigan, maybe eight people will hear it, maybe eight, thousand people you don't know but I was um, I was both humbled and honored and so this is weird but also kind of great Tom Mischke and Brian Oak both your reputations precede you 
As a matter of fact, before we get too far into it, uh, I want to thank uh, proprietor of Grumpy's Northeast, Pat Dwyer, who's here being a little quiet mouse in the background <laughs> and uh, making sure our glasses are full. When I told him that, uh, I asked him if I could record this show, the debut show for our sixth season of Wall of Power TV, I said, yeah, I'm going to have Brian Oak and Tom Mischke. He was Tom Mischke. He was like almost bowed down on the spot. And he told us, I'm getting back to what you said about pulling on the driveway, but you can't go in until you hear the end of the show, Brian. So he told me about a great show Tom Mischke did around, you went up to Duluth. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to hear more about it because I didn't hear that show about, uh, around the anniversary of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Yeah. But you also did another show around the anniversary of the Edmund Fitzgerald. And I was driving back, I believe it was in a snowstorm, back from the Iron Range. And I remember I hit Forest Lake. And you were interviewing one of the Great Lakes Sea um, scholars yes. about it, and you asked every question to the tune of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald by Gordon Lightfoot. Every one, every question, and I expected him to hang up after one. And wouldn't you if you were expecting a serious interview and the guy's singing the questions? He not only stuck it out for the oh, whole yeah. interview, he treated every question seriously and answered it honestly and with sincerity and didn't care that I was singing it. He made one reference one time where he said, I'll have what you're having, but otherwise he answered the questions. Could you just give, give us just a little example of that? Because, I mean, I, I was driving and um, it came on and it, 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 I almost, if it hadn't been snowing so much, I would have pulled over, but I listened to the whole thing until I got home. and. Then, well, like Oak said, I stayed in the driveway here then. His name, us, the guy's name, he'd done a documentary on the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald, his last name, beautiful last name, Gumbinger. I still remember it, Mr. Yeah. Gumbinger. I'm sorry, was that uh, of the Duluth Gumbingers? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Gumbinger, to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on with us. This has interested me for many a year. I'm pleased that you're here to discuss this. Everyone went like that, right. and he just rolled. It was a lovely moment. I always tell people what made that was that he hung in there. He hangs up, we're never talking about this. It was incredible. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you guys. I would like to say, yeah. real quick, because yeah, I don't mind my interjecting. Um, not only one of the most creative radio talents I've ever heard, but also somebody who puts in all the preparation, does all the work. There's not anybody like Tommy Mischke. They're just, they're just not. And so that right there, I sort of got giddy inside. I felt like a teenager. That was weird. I felt like a fanboy. <laughs> like it, it was great. And it, it just one little story. There was one night, if I could share a very quick no, story before you go on to your next question. Like, so I'd listen to you on the way home at night, and, you know, sometimes you would string callers along, but you knew how to draw them out. Other nights, you had a thing set up. Other nights, it sounded like you were just all of a sudden sort of riffing, but years later, having met you, clearly that takes preparation. Yeah. Nobody is great yeah. at what they do without working hard and, and, and putting the work in. Yeah. But there was one night, you, and I don't know if they were regular callers, you made it sound like they might have been, or friends, but there was a Native American guy who called in. And, and again, maybe more than once, but this one night I heard, and you, you I've never met anyone less afraid of dead air. In radio, <laughs> there is no greater crime than dead air, ever. And you were able to stretch that silence so far sometimes that even I got nervous. Yeah. And I'm like, I know what he's doing, but I'm like, oh, no, we can't do that. But then also, you were willing to indulge the right kind of content, which is what made your show a thing that was a destination for me, and that was the whole bit. But one night you had this Native American guy, and you talked to him for a long time. He's like, we're about to do a powwow, can we do it? And they played drums, and they sang, and they shared their stories, and it might have gone on for a half an hour. Maybe not quite a half an hour, but it was a lot, way longer than radio allows you to do that sort of thing. And I sat, that was one of those driveway moments where I sat there, I'm like, I am painfully ignorant on Native American culture. And it was nice to hear that guy tell his story. And Tommy's like, yeah, let's do this, because this is an important thing. 
It went on a really long time. Drums and high pitched, howling, beautiful singing. And I, I, I've never heard anything of its like on the radio. Well, radio back then, at least where I was at the time. And we're not talking about the 20s, we're talking about the <laughs> early 2000s, <laughs> right. maybe the mid 2000s. But it is back then now, because things are moving fast. It's changed. Things are changing fast. It was the wild, wild west. Nighttime For radio. For you, nobody day. else had those That's guts. That's true. Well, not, you were not the gunslinger, guns. man. Nobody you else, were the gunslinger. Nobody else had a boss who wouldn't have fired him the next morning. <laughs> well, uh, there's that. I mean, I was allowed a bit of rope that most people weren't allowed, and I took full advantage of it, but still... But I you went places other people didn't have the creativity or the guts to go to. So I'm, not, I'm really not trying to flirt with no. you right now, but I do think you're a unicorn. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and I, I, I think one of the nice things about podcasting is it's the new Wild Wild mm -hmm. West. Right. It's the new There Are No Rules. It's the new Do What You Want, and that's the beauty of it, because it's the freedom in creativity that is the ticket without the freedom oh it's so painful but with the freedom the joy the joy of it and i know brian is also planning on pursuing potentially the podcasting thing keep your eyes and ears open for that and if you do and if it works out you will find that same incredible freedom that we have in our show you'll find it in your show yeah. And that I have found, for six years I've been doing the Mishki Road Show, right. and that has again been, you mentioned earlier, traveling the country. Right. Traveling the country is something you can do with a podcast. Right. Just going all over. Traveling I've been in Charlie. I've been in the back of bars, back of cafes, I've been in cars, I've been in, the, I've been in the middle of Yellowstone in a snowstorm in the middle of winter with a guy who lives in a little cabin. I thought, he'll either <laughs> kill me tonight, or, or we'll have a good show. Over. It's got a very much shining sort of feel I'm to it. I'm super glad it went good show and not killing. I really am. I'm very glad that it went that direction. We uh, have two of my favorite radio guys <laughs> in, uh, in, in the Twin Cities, Tom Mischke and Brian Oak on Wall of Power TV tonight. We are going to, uh, I want to talk about where these guys got interested in radio, <clears throat> about their new project together. Brian's got a... Uh, whole other podcast he's bringing on board here soon. But in the meantime, stay tuned to Wall Power TV. I'm your host, Paul Metza. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome to Wall Power TV, our debut show of our sixth season. I'm your host, Paul Metza, and we're looking for a couple of beers. What do we got? We got Pat Blair. There you go, Paul. The uh, guy of Mr. Mr. Thank, Thank you, brother. brother. Cheers, Pat guys. is, uh, let's uh, give a little uh, face time here to Pat. He runs uh, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest bars in America. Pat, how long have you had Grumpy's? 22 years this Russian New Year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I went to St. John's with this guy, as really? it turns out. Yeah. yeah. We sometimes, we somehow missed each other, but we know mutual friends, and uh, I'm proud to be drinking at a fellow Johnny's establishment. Let's, well, uh, God bless uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's toast Pat. Hey, well. To your health. Good to see you. Good to see yes. you too. Thanks, Pat. I'll say this. You, I, were, on, you were on radio for a while too yourself. Yeah, I did. Yeah, KJ 104 was the period in that sentence that I did. Yeah. KFAI, you know, all over the world. Thanks Alaska. So. I did Alaska before that dumb TV show. We're in Alaska. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah, Seward. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Seward, Alaska. God bless you guys. Grumpies. We'll, we'll catch up later. You guys need anything? Just, just power. Yeah. We're happy. All right. I, got and we will. All right. It's so great to have Brian Oak uh, and Tom Mischke, two radio legends in the Twin Cities. I'll give a little background on myself. When I was in high school, I did a year on WHLB in Virginia, Minnesota, up in the Iron Range which some people used to refer to as We Have Lousy Broadcasting, but it was actually a really cool radio show, and there was a guy on there <clears throat> whose uh, radio name was Jim Dandy, and that's who Bob Dylan, who lived in Hibbing 20 miles away, he was a black guy, and he used to play R&B, and so Dylan spent uh, the night he graduated from Hibbing High School, came over to listen to Jim Dandy, and uh, supposedly uh, we go back to Jim's apartment, ended up with a few of his records. Like Bob's never done that before. So I did a couple years in radio. I loved radio when I came down to Minneapolis. My mom and dad would go to Dayton's for Christmas. There was a guy named Franklin Hobbs on WCCO. Hobbs House. Hobbs House. And then 
When I finally moved down here 40 years ago, uh, I fell in love with Lee Kamen, yeah. the jazz image yeah. on NPR, who I think is one of the, what maybe will go down as one of the greatest jazz DJs ever. There was a handful of other ones, but um, Tom Mischke and Brian Oak, tell us about your radio influences. This guy is a bigger wizard than I am, so I'd like to his, 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 hear his story before I tell my own boring story. It's funny, the, uh, <clears throat> the influence on me, I think, is a guy <clears throat> I never heard of until after I got into radio. I know that sounds weird, but after I got into radio, I would get these letters from people who would say, you sound like Gene Shepard. And I had no idea who they were talking about. And then I ended up doing research on the guy, and I found out, oh, there was a guy doing what I was doing way better than I'm doing long before I was doing it. Really? Out on the East Coast, look him up. Gene Shepard, 30-year radio guy. I don't know if he was out of New York or Philly, but his radio show shot all over the East Coast. And Shepard was doing all the stuff I was doing. It, it, it speaks to the idea that it's hard to find originality. Every time you think you're doing something right. that's never been done, look around, someone's done it. Sure. But I heard a definition one time that originality is, if you don't know someone's done it, it is purely coming organically out of you. Right. And somehow your own personality is adding its own flavor to it. But it was a humbling thing to hear Gene <laughs> Shepard. You know, I know. growing up, uh, I fell in love with music at a very young age, as many of us did, as all, all three of us here yeah. did, and many, many people who are watching and listening right now. Um, my voice dropped when I was about 10 years old, a few years earlier than other people. I'd answer the phone and people would think where they're talking to my dad. <laughs> I'm like, nope. And so then when I was in about eighth grade, people were like, you got a great voice, you should do radio. So I'm not sure if I chose radio or if I was brainwashed into doing radio. Radio chose you. But that being said, um, I always like talking about music. I always like learning about music, you know. Like, so it's not just a matter of having a deep voice. It's a matter of exploring and learning. And whether you're talking to musicians or whether you're talking to an author, whether you're talking to a local politician, whoever it is, I like meeting people. I love interesting people. And radio has been the perfect venue towards that. And if I'm super honest, <clears throat> I don't really have another skill set. <laughs> so this guy, join the club, right, but, but, right, right, but 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 so it fell into it. So I've been very lucky, like you know, in radio, as you know, and you've also had a very exceptional path in that direction. Most people in radio. So I worked my first radio job at Rev One Hundred Five. Got fired because the Cargill sold it. And okay, now what? Do I move to Poughkeepsie? Do I move to? You know, Alabama, where do I go? I, and that's what most radio people who yeah. are diehard radio people, right. you go where the gig so is. You're here, you're, you're I've right. been lucky enough to do this in this market for 25 years. Right. And here's the bottom line, and I'm not trying to kiss anybody's butt. I like Minnesota better than I like radio, and I like right. radio better than I like most people. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's one of those things where I, I didn't want to move, and I would find something else to do, but I was lucky enough to do it for a very long time. So now I find myself untethered right now. But I, I don't know, like all of us, you play to your strengths, right? Like right. You, you do the thing that matters to you. Strength, singular. If, if you can't, well, you mean, <laughs> yes, actually. But also like, you know, getting up at 4 a.m. Like, so my first seven years in radio, mornings. My next 11 years in radio, afternoons. Considerably less challenging. Uh, but then the last eight years in mornings, getting up at 4 a.m sucks. It just does. It, it, there, there's no way around that. What time, that being said, it, what time do you go to bed then? That being said, well, it, the thing is you're like, I should be in bed by 8. And 11.30 you're watching a horror movie on Turner Classic right. Movies. <laughs> and I mean, it, it, So some nights you do the right thing, but when you get up that early it's a little easier to fall asleep early. But when you get up, I'm like, uh, and people are like, well you must get used to it. I'm like, no, 4 a.m. sucks yeah. every single day. Yeah. But you get a cup of coffee in you, you get a hot shower, and you realize, holy sh... You can trap. <laughs> I'm going to do the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And it, you know, it, yeah. it takes the sting out of it. Doing what you love makes a difference, which is why... 
And again, I'm not, I'm really, I'm not trying to flirt with you, Mishki, but, but. <laughs> He's married, Oak, by the way. Is he? Um, <laughs> little, um, when, well, night, when night, I would listen to you, the reason, the reason I enjoyed listening to you is, even if it was chaos, even if it was surreal. Which it often was. Oh, often. <laughs> but even if it was surreal, even if I wasn't really quite sure what you were talking about, there was a genuine love of what you did. Yeah, it was inspiring, man. And it's the well, same I thing. Like it. I, you know, I, I'm sure I talked about you know when I, especially when I worked at Cities doing mornings. I'm sure I talked about Justin Bieber or some other pop star. But I never lied. I never. I always had this thing where people are like, well, how can you play that music? I'm like, I just like doing this. I don't love. If, if, if I worked at a station where I love every song, right. I'm like I never once said. What a great new song from blah, 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 whoever. Right. I would just be like, hey, there's a new one from so and so. Right. But I would occasionally be inspired. There were still songs in that genre that I enjoyed. I would be honest. And I think that every day people's bullcrap meters get more finely tuned. Yeah. And you, 30 years ago, you could say whatever you want. People like, hey, that guy's funny. I like that guy. Right. Now, if you're going to be effective, if you're going to be a good communicator, an influencer, which, by the way, Tommy Mishki, great influencer. Um, it, you can <laughs> if you're going to be an influencer, or even just be someone that people want to go and listen to, honesty's never been more important. So you right. don't have to say, you don't have to deceive them, but you don't have to be like, I love this song. You can say, I played this song, that was the bit. The thing that I love about Tommy Mischke is I always felt inspired every time I listened to him. Like, this guy, f God, I want to swear so bad. I'm getting ready for my new podcast, and so I'm kind of getting my swear generator worked up. Flipping, but I, I, but I always, I, you flipping, I always flipping believed in this guy every time I heard him, and it, it was inspiring, man. It was yeah, it was Andy Watson off camera, my intrepid producer. I want to I wanna say something here. One thing I want to do selfishly, the show Brian and I and John Hyder are doing. I, I, I'm not wanting to necessarily talk about that. The show is at ForTheSakeOfTheSongs.com. For the sake of the songs is the name for two reasons. One, that's the reason we're doing it for the sake of the songs, and two, the domain name wasn't taken. <laughs> <laughs> now, timing. Brian, Are we not doing phrasing anymore? Brian mentioned his voice. My earlier. beard already smells right. like whiskey. He mentioned his voice changing at 10 years of age. I remember thinking that was the ticket to being a radio guy, was having a radio voice. Right. I never had a radio voice. But I remember thinking, yeah. God, a radio voice. Wouldn't that be great? And you'd get a job in radio. <laughs> but there are two people I know in life who, when I ask them a question, there's no pause. They just roll because they have a ready answer because their brain already has thought about this a hundred times more than mine ever has. And they're smart. This guy, when I ask him a music question, you can't throw him a music question where he goes, whoa, I've never thought of that before. Right. I don't come close to I love music. I think about music all the time. I'm passionate about music. I'm a little toddler compared right. to this guy. Secondly, it's the other way around, by the way. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little man. I'm a little man. He's a great man. Great he's, a, man. He's, a, he's a poet oh, warrior in a classic for, sense. A um, apocalypse now. Exactly. Yes. Uh, but that's actually James true. Fallows sure. is the only other guy, not to name drop, where I yeah, used to freak. The I used to, at the Atlantic Monthly. I used to freak out at the inability of him to, when you ask him a question, to go, um, and then answer. I understand, um, and then answering. I don't understand, yeah, that's nothing. Get ready, pal. Boom, 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 boom. That's this thing. Now he's flirting with me. Number one, I totally agree with you. I mean, I've been listening to Oak for years. And he, you know, he'll introduce a tune by Band X and give you 30 uh, seconds about who wrote it, where it came from, where it was recorded, et cetera, et cetera. And it, it, it's stuff I love, it, because then I share that info 
at bars and I win bets. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 what about a percentage? Yeah, a percentage? Hand. Now that when you start your new uh oh, okay, new here we go. Patreon yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and your new podcast, I'll kick in. But uh Tony Nishki <laughs> it was kind of a legendary spot. Was it Fallows on David Letterman 20, 15, 20 years ago? Or, no, who was it? Was Jesse it Jesse was on Jesse Letterman. Jesse Ventura, yeah. the governor of Minnesota. Uh, who doesn't have time to bleed, by the way. <laughs> sit next to David Letterman, and on the break that I think was caught, and is probably on YouTube, Letterman leans over to Jesse Ventura. What was that the show that he said? The streets in St. Paul are so crooked because they were designed by Irish, drunken Irishmen. Might have been the same show. Yeah, but anyway, so Letterman, so Letterman leans over before they cut to break, goes to Governor Jesse Ventura and says, "What's up with this Tom Mischke guy?" Right? <gasps> that was a great moment, man. That's a new story. That's new information. You've never heard that. that? Oh, is it? Tell the story, Tommy. But I didn't know. I've you already, knew. I've already like praised I didn't know you lots. knew it. Oh, yeah. The only guys I thought knew it, I'm not joking, are me and my two kids, my, my boys. I wasn't born yeah. yesterday, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a True weird fact. story. So Ventura's governor of Minnesota, he goes on Letterman, and he gets introduced, and there's this moment. We all know the moment. It's in every show. Wait, what year was that, Tom? So, like, well, 2000. Yeah, 2000, when Jesse was, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, so he comes remember. out, and there's that moment we all know where the you see the guy go over and hug him or shake his hand, and then whisper in his ear, and you go, the mic's not picking it up, and you go, what's that about? Well, I didn't know they taped these things at five thirty or six. I, I, I'm, yeah, I thought these things were, I'm out of it. I thought they were live, but they 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 taped then. So Jesse calls me at because uh, I used to work with him at KSTP. He calls me at <laughs> six in the afternoon, and he says. Mishki, just leaving Letterman. You're not gonna believe it. He introduces me. He whispers in my ear, "What's with this Mishki guy?" Yeah. What? And but the Atlantic had come out, and Fellows had done this story on me, and he had read it in the Atlantic. And you see Jesse go. <laughs> <laughs> Because well, you don't expect it. It's just what the hell. But also, and, Mishki. And and as they walk to the desk and sit down, you hear Jesse at one point just really pause and go, "Why did you ask me that?" You can read the lips. And Letterman, as he sits down, you hear him move in front of the microphone. You know, I listen on the internet. Well, that wasn't good. I don't know if you guys know about my brain, but that's not good. It is not good to go into the show thinking Letterman is tuning in on the internet. Uh, yo, I, uh, I have a certain weakness right. that can lead to what we call in the business clinical depression. And uh, the, stress, the stress of David Letterman listening does not help. <laughs> it was lovely, it was no flattering, but it did not help. For the record, I think I took a week off work to recover <laughs> psychologically and get back to doing what I love to do, which is just doing radio and the hell with the rest of the world. Right. To back up what he just said, I don't think it matters what you do for a living. If you start to drink your own Kool-Aid, read your own press, and believe it, every morning, getting up early, being like, why, oh, this is like, it's already uphill, like, and get some coffee, go in, and be like, is today's show going to be garbage? Probably, because I'm not very good at it. Um, but you do work, and you put in the years. Yeah. I feel like everybody, no matter what you do for a living, you do your best work, whether you're a musician, you're an insurance actuator, you're a construction worker, you're a radio person. If you go in thinking, you know what? Even though David Letterman said, I am the best ditch digger in the upper Midwest, if you stop believing that and be like, no, I gotta fucking do some real work today. I need to do some real work today. Uh, sorry. That's a pro. Uh, oh, it used to be, used to be. Getting out of it though. Uh, I'm an experienced if, editor working if, with uh, Max. Thank Max's, you. No problem. Uh, but if you say, like, I need to actually do my work today, 
and take it seriously and be thoughtful and be present no matter what you do for a living, that's the right way to be. Now, that being said, pretty bad ass that David Letterman has. What's up with this Michigan guy? Or you could look at it this way. I've listened. I don't get it. What's up with this Mishki guy? He's not saying that Mishki guy. Boy, doesn't he kill it every night? He didn't say that. He said, what's up with this Mishki guy? That's fair. Where's, That's fair. where's the exclamation? I I, earlier on, when I described your show, it was interesting and engaging, but I also used the word surreal. I'm not saying you're for everybody. I wasn't. I was borderline of well, you're still not. No, no, you're still not. Even this um, show is losing a lot of people right now. <laughs> that being said, well, it's, there's a lot of radio talent in this town. Minnesota's a weird place to do yeah, radio. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's not like other places. Like, if you're in Chicago, you're like, hey, there's music for the pumpkins. Coming up, we got the peppers and the black. And, 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 but you can get away with that, and you can make a real living doing it. But especially what you did. So here's the weird thing about me entering into the podcast world. You're a talk guy. Yeah. You're clever. You're smart. The best part is, and people you, love him. But he knows how to make it weird. Stuart Smalley. He knows how to make it weird, and people still love him, which is not. The podcast market is blood. Yeah. The radio is blood. Media is blood. There are so yeah. many vectors to market right now that it's glutted. If you can't be interesting, if you can't find a new way to present information, and make a destination, it's over. You're right. not going to get sponsors. You're not going to have any listeners. This. Weird, brilliant, Gandalf of a look, and then not because I'm, you're old. I'm older than you. I know I am. Um, you're seven years younger, brother. Well, how come you look so much better? <laughs> it's the lighting. <laughs> it's the lighting. Um, you, you, but you have to, you have to find a way, and now more than ever, yeah. and you, you have to find a way to make what you do a destination. Yeah, you're right. And you always did that, although I felt it was a little niche, and I felt it a was little niche. Cultish, yeah. But anybody who spent the time listened to a few broadcasts, you have to invest a little bit. Nobody's, yeah, right. bri nobody's <laughs> flipping brilliant out of the gate. Um, Brian, can I jump in here for a minute? Please. Uh, I'm having so much fun. You guys are imparting so much cool information. We're we're going to take a little pause on Wall of Power TV. I'm the host, Paul Metza. There you are.